Okay, so in the remaining part of this uh, exam questions by topic on ratio, we're going to look at it with probability, and then we're going to look at it with algebra, and the algebra stuff is pretty tough. This one is nice and easy to start off with, though. It is from a calculator paper, and it says there are only blue, yellow, and green cubes in a bag. There are twice as many blue cubes as yellow cubes, and four times as many green cubes as blue cubes. Hannah takes at random a cube from a bag, work out the probability that Hannah takes a yellow cube. Now, I've put this in the ratio section because I think it can, answer, it can be answered really nicely using ratios. So we're going to have our blue to yellow to green, and it says there are twice as many blue as yellow. So if I said that yellow was one part, then blue would be worth two parts because it's twice as many. And then it says four times as many green as blue. Well, if blue is two, if I times that by four, I get eight. So that these are the ratio of the different parts that we've got here. So we want to just work out the probability that Hannah takes a yellow cube, which is this section that we've got. Well, that is one part out of a total of two plus one plus eight, which is 11 parts. So the probability or the proportion for yellow is just going to be one eleventh, which is the correct answer that we have here. Okay, so we're going to now look at this one, which is perhaps a little bit more challenging, and it's also from a non-calculator paper. So it says there are only red, blue, and purple counters in the bag, and the ratio of red to blue is 3 to 17. So red to blue is 3 to 17, and they don't tell us about purple straight away here. Sam takes at random a counter from the bag. The probability that the counter is purple is 0.2. So the probability that it's purple is 0 0.2, which means the probability that it is red or blue must be 1 minus 0 0.2, which is 0 0.8. Sorry, I didn't even read you the question. Let's work out the probability that Sam takes a red counter. So I have got 0 0.8 or 80% that I want to kind of share between this 3 and the 7 because... 20% or 0 0.2 has already been taken by purple. So what I really want to do here is I want to share 0 0.8 in the ratio 3 to 17. In the ratio 3 to 17. So 3 plus 17 is 20. So I'm going to do 0 0.8 divided by 20. Now if you don't like doing this, you could do 0 0.8, you could divide it by 2 and then you could divide it by 10, that's the same thing. 0 0.8 divided by 2, that's 0.4. And when I divide that by 10, I get 0.04. So for the, um, not for the final answer, but now I have worked out that this whole thing needs to be multiplied by 0.04. But I'm just going to be finding out what the probability is for red. So because each part is worth 0.04, there are three parts for red. So that is 3 times 0.04, which is 0.12. So the probability that Sam takes a red count is 0.12. And if you did 0 0.04 times 17, you would end up with the probability of blue. You could add that to 0 0.2, check it all adds up to 1, and we know for sure that we've got it correct. Let's double check, though, from the mark scheme. It is 0 0.12, and it's not easy to read through these things, which is why I always like to do these kind of written solutions to help you guys. Okay, now we're moving on to algebra, and this one has got simultaneous equations in it as well, okay? So, it says that P and Q, and Q are two numbers such that P is greater than Q. When you subtract 5 from P and subtract 5 from Q, the answers are in the ratio 5 to 1. And when you add 20 to P and add 20 to Q, the answers are in the ratio 5 to 2. Find the ratio P to Q, giving your answer in its simplest form. So we've kind of got these like two statements. We've got statement one and then statement two. Let's have a look at statement one. So it says when you subtract five from P and you subtract the five from Q, the ratio of them is five to one. Now, what this means is if you do this one divided by this one, it's the same as if you did this one divided by this one. That's my favourite way of answering these. There are other ways of doing this. But I like to say if I do P minus 5 divided by Q minus 5, it must be in the same ratio of 5 divided by 1. So what I need to do is kind of move some of this stuff around. So I'm going to multiply the Q minus 5 up there, and I'm going to multiply the 1 up there, which isn't actually going to do anything. So I've got my P minus 5 being multiplied by 1. And then on this side, I'm going to multiply up by the Q minus 5. I'm just going to expand these brackets so that I get 5Q minus 25. And I'm going to add that 5 to the other side because it might be helpful. When I add 5 to minus 25, I could check this on my calculator, 
I get minus 20. So that was using the first equation that they told us about. We're now going to look at the second part. So it says when you add 20 to P and you add 20 to Q, they are in the ratio of 5 to 2. Now, same pattern as before. This divided by this is going to be the same as this divided by this. So P plus 20 divided by Q plus 20 is 5 divided by 2. Now, like before, the Q plus 20 is going to multiply up. The 2 is going to multiply up. So that's 2 lots of P plus 20 is going to be equal to 5 lots of Q plus 20. Let's expand some brackets. So that is 2P plus 40 equals 5Q plus 100. Now I'm going to su subtract that 40 so that I now get that 2P is equal to 5Q plus 60. Now here is the part that makes it simultaneous equations. Because I want to find out what P and Q are so that I can find out the ratio of P and Q. I'm going to do this by substitution. I'm going to take this thing that I've got here, which is P, and I'm going to substitute it in that place. And I think that should help me figure out what either P or Q is. And then I'm going to come up to this section where I can finish off my working. So I'm going to do two lots of P, and P, which is highlighted in blue, is 5Q minus 20. And that is equal to 5Q plus 60. So expanding the brackets, I get 10Q minus 40 equals 5Q plus 60. I'm going to just move this whole section up here so that I've got enough space to do this. And I am going to finish off by adding the 40 to the other side so that I get this. I'll subtract 5Q so that 5Q is 100. This means that Q is equal to 20. Now I'm going to come up here so that I've got enough space. Okay, so Q is equal to 20. That means I can go back to this section, which is down here, and I can find out what P is equal to. P is equal to 5Q minus 20. So that is 5 times 20 minus 20. Again, I could put this on my calculator. That's 100 minus 20, which is 80. So we have that P is 80 and Q is 20. So the ratio of P to Q is 80 to 20, which is just going to simplify right down to 4 to 1. OK? Great. We did get the answer for this one correct. So these next two algebra questions are a bit more challenging because they blend in with some things with quadratics. So if you haven't done quadratics yet, you're probably going to want to skip these, but they blend these topics together. So because these ratios are equal to each other, it's just like we did on the previous slide. This one divided by this one is the same as this one divided by this one, OK? So I'm going to start off by writing that x squared divided by 3x plus 5 is the same as 1 divided by 2. And just like before, that 2 will move up there, and that 3x plus 5 will move up there. So the x squared is going to get multiplied by 2. The 1 gets multiplied by 3x plus 5, which just gives you 3x plus 5. So because we want to find out the possible values of x, this is a quadratic. So we're going to put it all on one side and try and factorize or solve this. Now, because it is a non-calculator one, I don't think that I'm going to need to use the quadratic formula. So I'm actually going to see if I can factorize this one. Now, the factorizing technique that I use is I use the AC technique, where you have this is your A value and this is your C value. So we need to think of two numbers that are going to multiply to minus 10, but they need to add to minus 3. So they need to multiply to minus 10, but add to minus 3. I think it's going to be minus 5 and 2 because they will add to minus 10. Uh, sorry, they will add to minus 3 but multiply to minus 10. Now, what I do with this is I split that minus 3 in the middle up. I split it into a minus 5x and then a plus 2x minus 5 equals 0. The reason I need to do it into a minus 5 and a 2 is because I've got a minus 5 and a 2. And technically, this is exactly the same as the previous line. It's just had some splitting up going on. Now all I need to do is factorise this first section, so that is x brackets, 2x minus 5. And then I'm going to factorise this second section. Well, it's already got the 2x minus 5 that I wanted to be there. It's just a 1 that's outside that bracket to make this work. So we end up with the first bracket is 2x minus 5, and the second bracket is x plus 1. Now you can do that however you like, um, but that's just the way I like to do this part. So going to this last stage that we've got here, we can see from the first bracket that 2x minus 5 is equal to 0. In other words, x is 5 over 2. And from the second bracket, x plus 1 is equal to 0, so x is equal to minus 1. So our two solutions are that x is minus 1 or x is equal to 5 over 2. And you could give that as a decimal if you preferred. So let's check. 
yep, we've got minus one and 2.5. It does say OE, which means or equivalent, and obviously five over two is equivalent to 2.5 in that particular case. The last one that we've got here is definitely the most challenging, but not part A, it's part B that's really the hardest. And I think this was possibly the last or the penultimate question in the summer 2020 papers, which were actually sat in October because of the pandemic. Okay, so the first one, it wants us to find the ratio of C to D. And we've got this equation that says 5C plus D equals C plus 4D. Well, I just want to find out what C is equal to D as. So I'm going to start off, here is my 5C plus D equals C plus 4D. I'm going to subtract this C from both sides so that I get 4C plus D equals 4D. And then I'm going to subtract D from both sides so that 4C is equal to 3D. Now you might be tempted to think, great, that just means that the ratio is 4 to 3. But that's actually not the case. It doesn't work. It actually is the other way around to that. Now I'm going to try and explain why that works. If I make C the subject, so if I divide both sides by 4, I get that C is 3 quarters of D. So if I was going to say that D is 1, then C has to be 3 quarters of 1, and 3 quarters of 1 is 3 quarters. And then if I multiply both of those ratio sides by 4, I get 3 to 4. So the true answer is actually 3 to 4, not 4 to 3. Okay, so this one is the hardest question I think I've got on ratio. It says 6x squared equals 7xy plus 20y squared, where x and y are both greater than 0. In other words, both x and y are positive numbers. So I'm going to start off with trying to do the same technique that I did up here of kind of putting it all as like an equation and trying to find out what c and d are in terms of each other or what x and y are in terms of each other. So I'm going to begin by thinking about 6x squared equals 7xy plus 20y squared. Because it kind of looks a bit like a quadratic, I'm going to subtract these things across and I'm going to see if I can factorise this. And I'm going to use the AC method, which is my 6 and my minus 20. I'm going to try and think of two numbers that multiply to those things being multiplied together. Sorry, that two, yeah, two numbers that multiply to the 6 times 20, which is minus 120, but I want them to add to minus 7. Now, I can just do a quick trial with some numbers here. If I do 120, if I divide it by 6, I've got 6 and 20 would be my two factors, but I can't make them add to 7 in any way. So 120, I don't think, is going to divide by 7, Let's try 120 divided by 8. Let's see if we can work anything with 8 and 15. Now, obviously, one of them is going to need to be negative to make it multiply to 100, negative 120. And to make it add to minus 7, I think if I make that one negative, it should work. Yeah, 8 times minus 15 is 100, minus 120. And 8 add minus 15 is minus 7xy. So I'm going to use this knowledge to split the minus 7xy up into two bits so that I get x squared plus 8xy minus 15xy uh, minus 20y squared equals 0. And I'm going to see this as two separate parts that are going to get factorised. So I'll take out the highest common factor that these two have, which is a 2x. I think that's the highest thing that they've got. Yep. So that's then going to be a 3x here plus a 4y. Now, the highest common factor that these next parts have got is going to be a minus 5. So there's going to be a minus 5 and a y, minus 5y, which is going to give me a 3x and then a plus 4y. So this will help me to do the final bits of factorising. I've got the 3x plus 4y for the first bracket, and then the second bracket is what's here and here. That's going to be my 2x minus 5y equals 0. So taking all of this information up here, this tells me that either... 3x plus 4y equals 0, or 3x is equal to minus 4y. But because x and y have both got to be positive, this won't work, because whatever x is, y, sorry, whatever y is, it's being multiplied by a negative number. So if y was positive and it's being multiplied by a negative, then x is negative. So this one is not going to have any, it's not going to be applicable for this particular situation. So my second one that I have is that 2x minus 5y equals 0, or 2x equals 5y. Now, without having to do the long process, we can see in this top one, when we had 4c equals 3d, the ratios kind of switched around the numbers that you'd expect. So our ratio of x to y, instead of being 2 to 5, it's going to be 5 to 2 that it looks like there. And it's the same logic of what we talked about in this first part of the question. I think that one is super, super hard. 
Let's check we've got it right. We've got three to four and five to two. So that is everything on ratio. The next stuff that is coming up is all on proportion. But um, if you've stuck with me for all of these, you're obviously doing very well with your studies.